the space race is still going extremely fierce. Space will come to represent the ultimate high ground in the contest for political influence and economic wealth among countries. China is playing the long game, and they're playing to win. To get ahead in the race, communism is learning from capitalism in general and from SpaceX and Blue Origin in particular. Now though, China appears to have taken to matching space achievements by Western nations a bit too personally. Somehow, no one can imagine a mad scientist-like idea to combine the technology of two arch enemies that has been carried out by the billions people country. So why did this insane mixture happen and why is China considered the world's biggest copycat? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. So, what's the deal with this crazy combination? Or should I say, abomination? CAS Space, a commercial spin-off from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, where you get that CAS in, is already developing rockets for commercial satellite launches and announced in August that it wants to send people, that's right, people, up into space. Albeit, pretty brief. It's a pretty brief time up there for them. According to the press release, a single-stage reusable rocket is built by CAS Space. It is intended to take as many as seven passengers on a 10-minute ride up above the Kármán line at 100 kilometers, which is generally held to be the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. CAS Space's planned suborbital rocket for space tourism appears to draw from proven technologies used by Blue Origin and SpaceX. The illustrations, since deleted, of the CAS Space Project quite remarkably resemble both Blue Origin's New Shepard suborbital space tourism rocket and SpaceX's Crew Dragon Capsule. Except for similarities with New Shepard, there are still some differences. For instance, using five Sungyung kerosene liquid oxygen engines in contrast to a single BE-3 liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen engine on Blue Origin's rocket. The renders present grid fins close to the highest of the rocket, which would guide the rocket's descent. The rocket can be caught by an arm connected to the launch tower as an alternative to landing legs, following a concept unveiled by SpaceX for its large Starship Tremendous Heavy rocket. The crew capsule will meanwhile descend to Earth with the aid of three parachutes. Whether CAS Space's plans are accurately depicted by the artwork in the press release, we'll have to find out more in 2022 when the first demonstration flight is scheduled to take place, followed by a full suborbital test flight that will take place in 2023 with suborbital travel services starting in 2024. As a matter of fact, China has copied the designs of foreign companies many times. So the question is, why and how do they do that? China is far ahead in the space race under the communist-style government, and it is clear that China's space ambitions are expanding. President Xi Jinping has declared that China's space dream is to overtake all nations and become the leading space power by 2045. They have a hunger to learn to catch up with the West and surpass them in all aspects, especially space. Not only NASA, but China also pays close attention to what innovative US companies like SpaceX are doing as well. Whether you hate the facts or love it, China is known as the world's biggest copycat. There's a lot of proof to this. In the summer of 2019, close-up photos of the Long March 2C rocket were subsequently posted on Chinese social media accounts. They were virtually identical in design to the grid fin SpaceX uses to steer its Falcon 9 rocket. Another example is the Long March 8 booster, which is powered by kerosene fuel, the same type of fuel that fuels SpaceX rockets. According to Chinese officials, this rocket would be capable of landing on a sea platform like SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster in 2025. In late February, China unveiled strikingly similar SpaceX Falcon Heavy plans of building a triple-core rocket. At the same time, it also confirmed plans to move forward with its titanic Long March 9 rocket that looks like the Saturn V, 
an American super heavy lift launch vehicle that remains the most powerful rocket that has ever flown successfully. In April, a presentation by the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology showed a suborbital Earth-to-Earth -Earth rocket that looks inch by inch similar to SpaceX's Starship Render from four years ago. In May, China's National Space Science Center, or CNNSC, has shown off a prototype for a Mars cruise drone that looks extremely familiar. Hmm. The image shared by the Science Center shows a small rotorcraft with two large blades sitting on a table, seemingly heavily inspired by NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter. Despite Chinese efforts to become a creative power during the century, the reality is that the copy is still a profitable and efficient way to make cash. In a country of fast changes, there's no better and cheaper way to keep pace with the best and shorten economic and technological distances than copying the leaders of the race. On the way to the top, copying is only the first step. Once they learn about the inner workings of how things are done, the sky's the limit. But then again, we're talking about space, so maybe it's not the limit. Or maybe it is the limit, but they're gonna go past it? Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. It's not just a matter of money, but also an element of risk. China is a country with abundant resources, both in terms of human and capital. Instead of spending a large amount of time and money on inventing, they prioritize what's quick and easy to make more profit. This lack of risk-taking, wanting justified returns, often leads Chinese space companies and agencies down the path of copying a successful design. Waiting and copying someone else's approach but executing better is often the safer and more successful path. You avoid the unknown risks and instead are free to iterate on an idea you already know can work. Even as the world's most populous country, China has hundreds of millions of people who know how to work at a company, but far fewer people who are trained in design, engineering, and other creative fields requiring more experience. Therefore, the country's current specialty is manufacturing things that were not locally invented. Given the government's enormous wealth and political will, it is clear that China has the potential to set the kind of economic policies and build the kind of education and research institutions that propelled the U.S. to technological dominance. But why that potential cannot be realized? The main cause is related to the educational field. In China, to learn and to copy are pretty much the same thing. The Chinese education system has long been based on rote learning rather than encouraging originality. Children are taught from an early age the right and wrong answers. Breaking new ground was frowned upon. Changing something deeply ingrained is hard and almost impossible to do quickly. However, while the West's tendency of focusing on this copying issue is really looking at the trees instead of the forest, China will quickly move past this stage and start to create its own innovations. China is emerging very strongly and has a good chance to become a formidable competitor in the space industry that the US and SpaceX need to keep an eye out for. The space race is now more exciting and even more intense than ever. Let's wait and see if China can beat other competitors and rise to the top. And that's all the information we have for you today. By the way, if you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us with, you know, a round of coffee or tea or something like that, you know, just, you know, <laughs> you can become, <laughs> you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. As always, this is Kevin, and I'll be seeing you next time.